Is this Iran as you imagine it? The theocracy where women can't sing, dance, or even show more than their face and hands in public. Videos that have been shared widely online, and yet these women could be arrested for what you're seeing. No one on the street bats an eyelid. A cultural shift has taken place. It's been 10 months since the death of Masa Amini in police custody, arrested for improperly wearing a hijab. Her death led to the largest protests against the regime since the Islamic Revolution came to power. More than 500 protesters were killed and over 20,000 arrested. Many protesters lost their eyes after being shot directly with metal pellets and rubber bullets. The Women Life Freedom Movement forced Iran's morality police off the streets until now. Recent videos verified by the BBC show the return of their feared vans. Male and female officers patrolling and stopping women for their headdress, suggesting the regime hasn't given up its fight. Hijab is not a restriction by the government, it's by the country's laws and Sharia. Not following the mandatory hijab is haram by Sharia and also it is politically haram. Just after Persian New Year this April, Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei's speech heralds their renewed campaign. A raft of new measures, the return of familiar repression, but now with modern tools. A network of traffic cameras monitoring the country's streets, now purpose to catch drivers violating public morality rules, including not wearing the hijab. The Iranian authorities have boasted of sending out over a million of these SMS texts since the start of the new campaign. Offenders can lose their car or be arrested. A criminal record for not wearing a hijab. My name is Shadi. I'm in my middle thirties. We met Shadi online. She lives inside Iran and has taken part in the anti-regime protests. She refuses to wear the hijab again. We always knew that whatever uh, uh, the government is always doing, if if we call it a little bit of basic kind of freedom, uh, it's something temporary. Because it's Islamic Republic, the regime hasn't changed. Uh, you know, it's just we are in a war between people and uh, governments. Artists and actresses who've appeared in public in recent months without the mandatory hijab have been sentenced to unusual punishments. Afsana Bayagan, a well-known actress, was targeted for these outings. Given a two-year sentence and ordered to visit a psychological clinic for her anti-family personality. But it's not just lone women targeted. Businesses on the high street are being shuttered if they are found to employ women not wearing the hijab. The regime supporters, including women, are emboldened again too. Passers-by harassing women they see who are failing to wear the mandatory hijab. In this clip, two women wait in line at a supermarket. A man enters, attacks them by pouring a tub of yogurt over their hair to cover it. We've managed to reach one of the establishment's foot soldiers in Tehran. Hamid Reza Ahmed Abadi is a member of the Revolutionary Guard's paramilitary group called Basij. It helps enforce rules like the hijab on the streets. He's become a prominent defender of the regime. One group of these women are mentally challenged and they must be checked in mental health clinics. But others are fooled by the international media like the BBC. They are hallucinating and it won't be difficult for us to deal with them. Are you not refusing to accept the diversity of Iranian society? It's a very good question. The majority of our population are Muslim. Once I identified a spy filming a protest, she looked like a terrorist. I went to her and asked her to stop. She confronted me. I slapped her and grabbed her camera and squeezed the lens into her mouth. It seems like you take pride in being violent towards women. In our country, there is no such thing as 
opponents of Islamic Republic. People are born Muslim, so they need to follow the rules. If anyone wants to breach the laws, the enforcement powers will intervene and arrest them. To some extent, it seems the regime is in denial about what the new generation wants and how much Iranian society has changed, or perhaps returned to values that were once common before the Islamic Revolution. Iran before the 1979 revolution, where women had relatively equal rights. This rare footage shows the first time women were given the right to vote in 1963. By the late 70s, several women served in Iran's parliament and local councils. Women could request divorce, fight for child custody, and the minimum age for marriage was raised from 13 to 18. They were also free to wear whatever they like. The country became a diverse centre for regional art and culture. Its liberal values were despised by the leaders who installed the Islamic Revolution. From the very beginning, women protested the loss of their rights, here opposing the hijab just days after the 1979 revolution. Since then, many Iranian women have led double lives. The regime paints the hijab as a religious duty, but even inside Iran it's possible to find some voices who challenge this. I never try to convince anybody to wear hijab because I believe that in Quran, Quran does not imply that wearing hijab is compulsory, as Islamic Republic says. The majority of people do not accept this claim. Would you say that the authorities' rules could actually be pushing people away from religion, away from Islam? Extreme policies in Iran has pushed many women, many men in Iran uh, far from religion, uncovering hijab uh, is a symbol for change movement. In recent days, the regime's moral authority has been rocked by a series of leaked sex tapes, including a senior and hardline official responsible for Islamic guidance, engaged in sex with another man. He's been suspended ahead of an investigation. A difficult position to be in for a government that criminalizes homosexuality secret lives at the top of the regime. It's 45 years since the revolution that brought the clerics to power, and nearly a year since the public outburst of anger against a system that has suffocated women's rights. Now, the vision of a unified Iran that the regime projects has itself been revealed as an illusion. And it's not the hijab that's at stake, but rather the legitimacy of the regime itself.